although mood courts may seem like a game or it's just sort of playing, it really simulates things that I know for myself. When I sit in front of a panel, the WTO, I feel what the students are feeling. And it's really a great exercise. And I think students should really, whenever they're in law school, really try to do at least one mood court. Rhodes University in South Africa is hosting the mood competition this year. There are 15 teams from 15 law schools across the African continent competing for one prize. As they settle in, the pressure begins to thicken. We get to meet people from all over the world and see how they do things and that's very challenging when you compete with people from all over the world instead of competing just at a national level at your country. To meet uh, people from other universities from all over Africa, it's a really exciting opportunity for everybody to get to know one another and see what the rest of Africa is like. Show my uh, junior students from my country that they can do much better than just learn in classes. They can pass participate in uh, new stuff coming here. The excitement is a little bit hidden, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Rhodes University's home team has their final practice before the moot competition begins. Thank you, Mr. Panelist. Um, we take into cognizance your question. Mr. Panelist, um, this ties into the next section of the specific submission where we are speaking to because the respondent is experiencing balance of payment restrictions, they still cannot forget that they are members to an FTA. The growth in the number of teams competing and the level at which they compete is growing rapidly. So I have all of the faith in the Rhodes team, but I also know that they're going to face tougher competition than we did. We faced tougher competition than the previous year did, and the same thing with the previous year before that. I think they're going to perform really well. I just think it's not going to be as easy for them as it was for us. I think in terms of general moot preparation, it does teach you to advance legal arguments, it teaches you to focus on the elements of the law as opposed to just putting forward debating arguments and going on logic and intuition. It does teach you to focus on the elements of the law and that is an integral part of general legal practice in South Africa, not necessarily just international trade, but legal practice as a whole. So I think this, this kind of moot culture does make a big difference when you go into practice. All suited up, the teams get ready to find out who they are competing against. They don't know which team belongs to which country, as the teams are numbered. Some teams have participated in the moot longer than others. It's the luck of the draw. Of the rounds, so basically we're going to establish who's going to plead against who and at which time. Second number is 35. countries are required by the term non-discriminatory to ensure that identical treatment is available to all similarly situated uh, general system preference beneficiaries. The respondent wishes to submit that Article 18 is similar to the provisions in Article 12. Finally, I shall be arguing that the measures undertaken by the Republic of Haiti are are of a protective nature. We burn out by the tariff trade quota that has been set, which will hinder the trade that they have been carried out smoothly. The enabling clause does serve as a sound legal basis for the Chimeha FTA. I think that um, Article 24 and the provisions and the context of an FTA is not entirely clear. The document not constitute a waiver as it was contemplated by the public body and also specifically as contemplated under public international law in the ILC Articles Article 45A. The complainant notes that in the Chimeha FTA, the issue, uh, the measure at issue here is the reduction of TIPs. What I can say from the perspective of the WTO, where I'm very familiar with African countries' participation in trade litigation, there is very little participation. I think, I, I may not know, have the exact uh, numbers, but I don't think that there has been any African country that has taken a dispute to the WTO dispute settlement system. There might have been a couple in the Maghreb, but certainly not uh, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. In terms of academia, there are very few international trade law topics discussed at an undergraduate level. It tends to be more of a postgraduate legal study, which means that students aren't exposed to it at an undergraduate level, so they don't, a lot of them don't know about it. 
we're going to be announcing the semi-finalists. So those teams will be proceeding tomorrow. There's only four teams that are going through to the semi-finals. It's going to be team number 30 and 69. <laughs> The four teams for the semi-finals are chosen. It's heads or tails for who will be the complainant or the respondent. I'm gonna go do a turn cross. If it lands like this, you're complaining. If it lands like this, you're complaining. So 50 complaining for team 30. Oh, oh. Heads. 69 is complaining and you're responding. There are not many Africans out there taking advantage of these opportunities. And I think that M&A and banking and finance is very, very sexy. But that's not everything in law. There's so many other opportunities and so many opportunities that we can really make an impact. It's a nervous moment of waiting before the finalist teams are called in to compete for the final round. The WTO panel in this dispute is now in session. Remember, the WTO has not acted inconsistently with Article 11. Seek to promote the values of an international trading system. This case has in no way been brought in good faith. That the reduction does not mean an elimination of the duties. requires that duties and other restricting regulations of commerce must be eliminated for the purposes of a free trade agreement. With this, the respondents We have reached the stage where we will now, as the panel, uh, deliberate. So. That was one of those fire rounds where you have no idea who it could be when you're coming out. That's how we feel right now. Yeah. We're very, very grateful. The winner is announced at the awards dinner. The main prize stands between Team 30 from Kenya School of Law and Team Number 52 from Strathmore University. It really made me proud to um, listen to the vigor of legal analysis, the persuasion, um, and I can honestly tell all of you that as a trade negotiator, I do not ever want to face you in this <laughs> uh, The winner is 0 30. <laughs> We are not going to stop it here, we are going to um, practice even more and put in even more hours into the process so that when we go for the international rounds, we are not just going to participate, but we are going for, to win the competition. Decisions that are made in Geneva, or decisions that are made internationally, affect us a lot because we are not at the table and we don't have a voice. And I think that African countries should invest in training young students or young people or even you know delegations in Geneva that have already been in the field for 20 years and just opening their minds and opening their eyes to what really are the issues that needs to be discussed on a global scale.